All right, guys, this is Chris with Drop Dice. So uh, for those of you who were paying attention to the channel this weekend, unfortunately, there was no Community Saturday this week because I had geared up to go ahead and start doing the, the Community Saturday video, and I was putting the final touches on the Copper Jackal game. Super excited, and then they were doing construction work outside my house, and they knocked out my electricity, or not my electricity, excuse me, my, my cable, internet, and... TV. So unfortunately, I've had pretty much no entertainment for the last couple days. And uh, in Texas, with no entertainment and really hot outside, that's not a good combo. So unfortunately, I um, I started reading, and then I got a great text or a great message across Facebook on my phone that uh, that I wanted to share with you guys. So this is actually from Tim and James over at Tabletop Tears. And um, ba basically, what the message is, is it's saying that uh, they're looking to do a once-a-month campaign, and then it'll be decided on what we could do, and it may be free-floating as well, kind of depending on what, what works for us. Um, and they're excited to, to have what they're calling the Tabletop RPG Dream Team for, for their particular game. Now, there are other games out there called the, like the Provokers and the Winds of Sorceline. This one is actually going to be called the Besieged. And you might recognize some of these, uh, these names inside here. Um, what we're looking at is, is actually bringing in, uh, let me get the full list here, Lee Patterson or Tabletop Gaming with Juice, Juice. Uh, Nathan Kaplan, who is WASD20. Uh, we have Tim and James Kearney from Tabletop Terrors. Locrius, uh, who I mentioned in my, my five creator video. Um, totally awesome guy. Can't wait to play with him. Uh, like I said, if you, if you didn't check him out with the last video, definitely should. And then we also have uh, Michael Barker, who is actually from Be a Better Game Master. So this is a pretty cool team. Uh, I'm super excited to be... Uh, to, to be considered much less accepted to play uh, on on a, on this particular group because these guys are pretty awesome. Um, like I said, if you want to see some of them in action, check out the Winds of Sorceline and uh, the Provokers games. Um, so basically what we are doing is, is we're actually going to play in Dragon Grin or Arthen Vale, whichever name you prefer for the world there. Um, we're gonna play a provoke, or we're gonna play a game, not provoker. We're gonna play a game with the copper jackal. Basically, all of our characters are gonna be these, these copper jackals, and we're gonna start a little bit higher level than a standard copper jackal, and we're going on. Um, basically, it's a, it's a suicide run, and um, we've we've just earned the the rank of copper adept, and we know that we are going on a suicide run. So this first video is going to be part of a small series that I'm going to put together, and I think I should do this a little bit more often. I'm going to do character design, um, at least for the characters I play online that you guys can see me. Um, just to let you know what I'm playing and show you what it is in case, like, you know, I'm using a different system and you want to find out how to build a character for, let's say, Fantasy Age or Legend of the Five Rings. You'll be able to flip over to it, and I'll give you a brief rundown. Now, excuse me, sorry, I just had lunch. Um, <laughs> so, the um, this one is is Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. I think most people are fairly comfortable with Fifth Edition. If um, if anybody needs a video on how to build a Fifth Edition character, I'd actually recommend Tabletop Gaming with Juice. He's got a great video on it. I'm not going to go into super detail about it because I know that there are others out there as well. Um, but basically, um, what I'm going to do is kind of take you through my character mechanically, and then I'm going to do another video where we're going to kind of introduce you to the character overall. So first off, let me uh, let me let me put on my little hype thing here real quick. Bam, Malakar or Arco, as he has been named. This is going to be my uh, my overlay for the game, and we'll get into why I chose a violin that way violin for my uh, for my overlay here. Um, basically, I'm going to be playing a concept that I'm I'm referring to as the Cursed Bard. Um, I may change this and add a little tagline saying Cursed Bard. Right now, the Malakar, I think it's a little low, so I'm probably going to raise that up a little bit. For me, this is kind of a dry run to make sure my stuff looks on point because uh, I want to I want to present myself and my channel really well during this chance because like a lot of a lot of people, this may be the first time that they view my channel or, or uh, check out my content. So it's definitely going to be cool to, to have kind of new influx of new viewers. Um, 
let's go ahead and I'm going to share a screen and talk to you a little bit about who I'm playing and what I'm playing. So first off, let's talk about the race. Um, I'll share a screen in a minute, but the race is actually from the book The Dragons, or excuse me, The Tieflings of Dragon Grin. Um, Basically, I started making a human, and then it suddenly occurred to me, I'm playing in a tabletop terrors game. Why not use some tabletop terrors content? Um, this one is is one of the tiefling races that, that they came out with to kind of tailor the race to their world. And one of them I, I really loved, and I've got a copper jackal that is another variation on this basic concept, but essentially uh, Malakar is a Villoc tiefling, which is the second tiefling they introduced inside that book. And it, they they have almost like a, a dwarven kind of aspect to them, except for they don't drink, um, and they wage war, and they believe that they're, they're mining not for gold and treasures and things like that, but they're mining for a purpose. They want to get to the core of the earth because they believe that there's a, a way to get to hell, basically, by digging into the earth. And they want to go there and wage war against the demons. But on the flip side, they also happen to be a really cultured um, race. And they do a lot of things that that are focused on the arts and, and studies and plays and dramas and things like that, which is kind of where the violin comes in. Um, the character that I'm playing, I, I thought having a a bard from that kind of kind of society would actually be really awesome and i'm changing up a little bit of what's inside that book and i've already got approval from them so no no worries there but essentially what i'm doing is is normally the the villoc are concerned mainly with theater and and it's kind of a big deal that they like you can't just be an artist it's something that you have to basically prove yourself immensely for and then study for years and then get approval of other people to get accepted into the theater college and then to be eventually be able to perform on stage for the Villoc as a whole. Um, and they have strong steep tra traditions in their different works of, of like plays, sonnets, um, poems, things like that. Well, my my character, Malakar, happens to come from a different faction of them that places a little bit more emphasis on the music. And so for his faction, it's easier actually to get into the theater, whereas the orchestra is actually much harder to get into. And so uh, part of Malakor, Malakar's backstory is, is that he was a music student that was failing, falling short every time he went up to audition. And... Um, Basically, he, he got so tired of it that um, he decided that he would make a pact with a uh, another being. Excuse me. He would make a pact with another being and um, to give him the edge that he, he desires, to give him the the power and, and to become the, the famous bard that he always dreamed of. Um, and, and we'll kind of get into that when I do the story portion, but I just want to give you kind of an idea of what I was doing before I started punching in numbers. Um, and basically, he he had his wish approved, and so now he is a bard warlock combo. Um, and that's why I said it's I'm I'm coining it as the cursed bard. Um, it, it's it's kind of hokey that I went with violin. I did that on purpose. It's kind of the 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 devil went down to Georgia type thing, you know, uh, or, or meet me at the crossroads, which the crossroads are actually part of my background. And we'll talk about that again in the next video. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start sharing screens real quick here. So if you do like this character sheet, this is a pretty unique character sheet. Um, so this is a this is actually a pretty unique character sheet. This one is available online. I forget who the maker of it is, but after this video, I will edit my comment section and actually include it inside there, or excuse me, not the comments, but the description, uh, and include it there, showing um, showing whose whose work it was. So this sheet, it's it's pretty pretty good. Um, there's a little minor things that I would I would like like the dis the notes and tools section here. I would like that to be kind of different because. I think it's kind of weird having them there. Maybe it's just me. But so let's start off with how stats are done. So stats for the Copper Jackals are done with a modified stat array. 
for anybody who hasn't checked it out, let me just kind of break it down for you. Essentially, it's the standard D&D 5th edition stat array, but it's plus one to all of those numbers. So you get a 16, 15, 14, 13, 11, 9, and then you also apply your racial features afterward. So the Villoc Tiefling gets plus two charisma and plus one constitution. If you guys are checking my numbers here, basically constitution used to be a 15 and my charisma was my 16. Um, so I'm actually starting off pretty potent as, as a bard. This is this is actually going to make me real powerful, and it really kind of reinforces this idea that I've 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 given up so much to become the bard that I am today. Um, and then the other thing that I went with was because I'm level three bard and level two warlock. Um, I decided to go bard of uh, the College of Lore which is going to be three, and that kind of reemphasizes my cultural beliefs that I'm I'm all about the history and things like that. The way I look at it is if the Villoc were going to make bards, there's there's two schools of thought, and the, the bard inside the book is actually perfect for it, the, the College of Lore and the College of War, um, or Valor, rather. And, and Valor is mainly, like, war-focused, and I, I picture that as, like, a Villoc front lines... Um, like a scald almost, like a like a battle bard that's out there in the front lines, inspiring the men to work harder. And then I, I picture the College of Lore to be the ones that stay home and reinforce their tradition of of what the music is about or what the plays are about and, and keep this long tradition lived. Uh, because you can't send every bard to the war lines. You, you have to have them there to train others. So I'm that's how I'm kind of picturing where this College of Lore fits in as compared to the College of Valor. Uh, his pact is actually with a great old one, even though if you read the background on who the Villoc are, um, a fiend would probably make a little bit more sense, but we'll get into that when I do when I do the background. I have kind of a plan for it, um, but he is actually packed of the tome uh, to kind of reflect this this idea that he wants to aspire to more. And part of his part of his pact is the story. It goes that um, that he traded this to become the great musician that he is and to learn forbidden um, music. And, and plays and, and things like that. And so part of part of what he has learned has actually contributed to why he doesn't live with the Villoc anymore. Um, basically, he's gotten himself on some forbidden stuff, and, and now he is kind of cursed to walk on his own. Um, so the Villoc Tiefling are a little bit taller and weigh a little bit more, so I, I did 2d10 instead of 2d8, and I just used the random height-weight charts uh, using 2d4 for weight at, like normal. Their hair is usually thick and black. Their eyes always have a red tint, and I liked the idea of them being kind of a, a black with like a reddish glow to them. So I'm just putting red here for short. But when I come time to describe, I know what it is. And then the skin color is going to be gray. Um, I'm kind of picturing him as, uh, for anybody who's played Terra Online, the, the Castians, I believe is what they're called. I'm kind of picturing the the Villoc, uh, this this particular Villoc to be a little bit more Castian kind of qualities. A very handsome guy. Um, he's got the horns and the prehensile tail, um, but he he doesn't necessarily eschew all of the norms of of what you see in like fourth edition tieflings where they're all red and they clearly look demonic. I want him to have kind of a subtlety to him. He looks a little bit more human. Um, I didn't give him a faith for now. I may change that later on, but um, I get the feeling that the Villoc, because of who they are, it's it's it really takes a devout Villoc to step forward and believe in a god when they grew up as slaves. Uh, well, at least their ancestors grew up as slaves to demons, and they continue the war against demons um, in the in quasi service to another demon. I think it takes an immense amount of. Uh, a fortitude to to really kind of turn against all these years of basically, you know, your people basically thinking, you know, if there are gods out there or, or yeah, we know there are gods out there, but why have they forsaken us? So I think it takes a special kind of person to step forward and have a lot of faith in their society. I could totally be wrong, but that's just kind of how I'm interpreting it. Um, if you guys check out my skills, I am, I am crazy loaded with skills here. So I get any four for, or excuse me, any three for being a bard. For College of Lore, I get another three. And then 
because of um, because of my background, I get two more. So for my background, I went and check, checked out my background first. I decided to be an entertainer because that's kind of your classic bard, and it, it really fits for my character concept. And I totally didn't think about it when I first did it. It's, it's like you get one instrument and the disguise kit as part of the background. So I was like, all right, perfect. I've got my violin covered. And then I went to the bard, and it gives you three more instruments. So I am super uh, super musician over here. I've got four instruments down. Um, so I've got violin, drums, the dulcimer, and the flute, which kind of gives me this idea that my character is a little bit more of like um, like a traveler, or, or or the common term would be like a gypsy, um, which I think kind of fits for for who he is and the fact that he kind of is a traveler now. He's kind of been tossed out of his home, um, and then so with that, I was able to get uh, acrobatics, arcana, deception, history. Um, which history kind of reinforces that 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 concept of of he's there to kind of teach the future generations, or at least that's what his school taught him. And then I have uh, perception, performance, which is expertise stat, sleight of hand, and stealth. Stealth, I decided to expertise. Originally, I was going to use history, or possibly arcana, but I decided on stealth because I wanted it to reflect a little bit of who he was thanks to the copper jackals. And so I think once he became a copper jackal, he started using some of these skills that he didn't normally use. Cause like the, the Villock are, are kind of your frontline soldier type guys. They don't, they don't do a lot of, of like sneaking around unless it's like tactically necessary. So I thought maybe, maybe kind of shining up the fact that, you know, he's, he's had to travel on his own and make, make mistakes and possibly have been jailed a couple times for doing stuff like, he didn't have any money, so he decided to pit pock the wrong person kind of thing. Um, so like I said, once once he was out on his own, he I, I picture him as kind of drifting for a long time before he was able to find the Copper Jackals. So the, the other thing I have here is the Jack of All Trades. Um, super cool. It lets you add half your proficiency bonus to any skills that you are not trained in. So I am crazy skill monkey. Look at look at this nonsense here. I'm a fifth. I'm a I'm a fifth level character, and I've got a plus ten to performance. Um, <laughs> that's that's crazy. I can get a thirty, which is you know top tier type level performance if I if I happen to roll correctly. All right, so. The one thing that I do like about this sheet, and I would, I, I do recommend it for this specific reason, is uh, let me do this real quick here. Is is actually this right here? So I get uh, my bardic inspiration, which is a d6, and then I I say that I have four uses because it's my charisma, and then I can set it to long rest, and it tracks my my usage right here. But it's got a, eight slots for different features. I use this for the Horns of Serenos game as well, and it. Um, it definitely helps out because my character in Horns of Serenos, he has four limited features inside there already, and he's a paladin, so he's probably going to get a couple more. I'd have to double check his class, um, but it's definitely handy. Uh, and then let's see here. So I got crazy lucky with my dice rolls on my hit points, to be honest. Uh, I have 51 right now as a, as a D8 class. Uh, that's that's pretty outstanding right there. Um, my armor class is is less than desirable for for most people. Uh, my plan is to stay in the back and hurl eldritch blasts and things like that at my enemies. Um, it's it is not to be up there in the fight. So. Uh, unfortunately, because of my class balance, I don't have a whole lot of attacks, but I do have an Eldritch Blast, which I get two beams, which kind of makes up for the fact that I don't have uh, multiple attacks. And, and Old Eldritch Blast is pretty much going to be my go-to mainstay ability anyways, um, because hell, it's better than if I if I two-hand the spear. Um, the spear is kind of in there because uh, the Villoc always are martial, so I thought, you know, maybe, maybe a spear so we can keep people at distance. And I know that the spear is not a reach weapon, but... Um, the, the general practice of how you use the spear is always to try and keep people at the at the tips range, essentially. Uh, I also have cutting words, which is uh, a bardic inspiration use. But the cool thing is, is right here, I've got my personality traits. So I know how to tell a relevant story to almost every situation. Um, I'm also going to contribute that to a little bit of song slash storytelling. Um, 
I'm a hopeless romantic and I always search for that special someone. So this one I decided once I decided that he was kind of ousted from, from the Villoc society that he grew up in, because now that he's an outcast, he, he has no one. He's not going to get that chance at, at, at love uh, with another Villoc, most likely. Um, so he's kind of looking for it where, where he can find it. Unfortunately, it kind of gets him in trouble sometimes. So his ideal is honesty. Uh, the art should reflect the soul. Basically, it means that he can have um, any alignment uh, his bond is, uh, my instrument is my most tre treasured possession, and it reminds me of someone I love. So this one I'm, I'm twisting a little bit. Um, his instrument is actually going to be a gift from, or his violin, is actually going to be a gift from his his uh, great old one who, who made the pact with him. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit more during the game, because I've got a surprise for you guys, and I don't want to ruin it just yet. Um... But his violin is going to be a gift from them, um, which which is kind of me twisting the words to make it fit something a little bit better. So his flaw is he's a sucker for a pretty face. Uh, this is this was just me having a little fun uh, at the fact that you know he's he's kind of hopeless romantic type of type of character. So I've got uh, a bunch of glass features because uh, you know I'm a bard here. <laughs> um, most of these I've already kind of talked about here and. So I do get Awaken Mind. That's one I haven't mentioned yet. It's tel telepathy. It, it uh, lets me talk to other people within 30 feet. However, I cannot um, understand them or they can't talk, talk back to me with telepathy, which unfortunately is a little a little bit of a downside, but I can deal with that. Again, it's packed as Pact of Tome, and with that, he went with his Eldritch Invocations as uh, Agonizing Blast, so I can add my Charisma to my Eldritch Blast. And then I also have Book of Ancient Secrets, which is going to be, allow me to take some some um, ritual casting and put it inside this tome. And the cool thing is, is if I ever lose this tome with Book, Book of Ancient Secrets, I can actually summon it back to me, and I can inscribe other rituals inside my book. So what I'm going to do is um, inscribe any sort of um, bardic rituals that I can get or rituals that I gain um, through possibly finding spell books. Um, right now, I've got Find Familiar and Detect Magic. I'm probably going to work out who my or what my familiar is eventually, but um, that gives me a little buddy. Uh, I like familiars in game. It's it's something that's real for me as a, as a pet owner. You guys have seen my monsters running around in the background, so I like having familiars and stuff like that with casters. All right, so his feature as an entertainer is backed by popular demand and so i decided because he's got so many instruments i was going to say that you know his culture and everything brought him up to give him a chance at the arts that a lot of people don't necessarily get so i rolled three times on what he's known for and he got instrumentalist fire eater and storyteller which i thought the instrumentalist and storyteller were super cool it fits with my concept and then fire eater was just actually kind of a nice surprise from the dice um Originally, I rolled the dice, and then I kind of built the concept from from knowing that he was going to be an instrumentalist and a storyteller. Um, I haven't decided on a favor from from one of his admirers or anything like that, but I do get two instruments, and one I chose was the violin, of course, and then the other I chose was a bamboo flute. It's a very they're very small. I actually own one, um, and uh, it, it's kind of like a traveling instrument. And he is not the richest person in the world. He's only got 15 gold. Don't make fun of him. And then from there, I've just got a whole bunch of useful stuff uh, for character sheets here. I can check off any sort of exhaustion. All the conditions are listed on this sheet for me. The combat rules. I think this is a super handy sheet. I'm actually going to have it printed off and in front of me during the game. So uh, tentatively, this is kind of the closest image that I can find. I will probably find out find something else. Um, because originally I was going to go human, and this was definitely going to be my human image, but I decided that uh, instead I was going to go the Villoc Tiefling. So I'm going to find me a Tiefling that I really like, so you guys can just ignore that for now. Um, <laughs> my character history, I haven't filled it in. I plan on doing the video, and then I'll just kind of, I'll, well, I'll write it up first, and then I'll do the video. Um, my appearance stuff, I kind of talked to you about that. Uh, enemies, I haven't decided if I want to start the game with any enemies. Um, Here's our copper jackal, jackal coin. Um, I threw that in there because that's the closest we have to a full organizational symbol. 
and then allies and organizations. I'm going to fill this in as I find out details about the rest of the party. Uh, and they start putting out their videos, kind of introducing who they are playing. Uh, and that way I have kind of my notes handy as far as what I think about them. And I can always add to those notes as I go through. Here's for the companion. Uh, this is where I'm probably going to put in my cat, raven, owl, whatever I choose to use um, as far as that goes. And then I have a ton of stuff for notes. I do have a matching spell book, um, which, give me a second here. Fortunately, I have it buried in the folder, so this will take a second. All right, here's my spell book, and let me close that out. So uh, the, the matching spell list is awesome because it does include stuff from the player's handbook and the elemental evil handbook as well. So stuff like, uh, let's see here, which spell is this one? Uh, control Flames from El Elemental Evil is on that list. Uh, create Bonfire, that's another one that some people like. Uh, I haven't found a huge use for it yet myself, but I'm, I know that people are talking about how you could abuse it and stuff like that, but that's every spell. Um, so essentially, it breaks it down by who the casting classes are, and then you can select it. Most of my stuff is coming out of the Bard, and I decided to take Prestidigitation to make myself a little bit more flexible. I have Vicious Mockery, which is always a fun spell. And then for my first level spells, um, there are some ones inside here that are kind of mainstays that are always good for bards to have, but I kind of skip them because of my character as a whole. So dissonant, dissonant Whispers and Tasha's Hideous Laughter are actually really handy bard spells. However, I get that with Warlock, so I didn't want to double down and take the same spell twice, so I just took it with my Warlock. And from there, I took Cure Wounds so that I could be a little bit more flexible, disguise self, make myself a little bit more flexible again. Fairy Fire, because uh, as I learned in the Viking game, this is an amazing spell. Uh, you know, everybody has advantage when you cast Fairy Fire on a target, which is just awesome. Uh, Thunder Wave, because I'm kind of more of a blasty bard, as, as limited as that is in 5th edition. Um, and I also have Unseen Servant, again, for utility reasons mainly. I haven't made it, hit it too far into the second level spells, but I do have Shatter. Again, another blasty spell. Um, and then from there, we'll take you over to the cleric. For from for the cleric, I've got written here that um, hold on a second should be okay. Perfect. Just double checking my save DC was correct there. So for the cleric, I say I got a note here that says from warlock. Um, Basically, because I took Pact of Tome, I got three extra cantrips, and if you notice, there's only two extra lines for any level. I used up all those, and so I took Sacred Flame on here so I could deal with Radiant Damage when needed. Again, that's more of a, a flexibility type thing. And then let's go over to my Warlock. From there, I have, of course, Eldritch Blast, which is going to be my mainstay for damage. And then I have Mage Hand, again, utility mainly, uh, Guidance, and light as well, um, which light I took as a human, so I may change that one. Um, I don't know; it kind of depends. Um, light is is generally good, but I may actually end up taking uh, something along the lines of dancing lights because you can move those around, and that might be a little bit more practical for me since I have dark vision. So for my first level spells, I've got Arms of Hadar, which is a pretty neat spell if you haven't read it. Um, basically. You deal some damage, and their strength saves are halved. On the failed save, they get no reactions until next turn. So either way, I get at least a good perk out of the deal. Um, Hellish Rebuke I took because uh, normally with a, a Warlock getting you know limited spell slots, it's almost not worth it to take Hellish Rebuke. However, because of the way bar, uh, the multiclassing with Warlock goes, I can actually use my first level spell slots from over in Bard to help me out as far as as far as like how my hellish rebuke works. So if you guys notice, I get two from Warlock, but from Bard, I get four first level spells. So that means I can throw out hellish rebuke six times if I really wanted to get that crazy with it. So it'll definitely be worthwhile. Um, I've also got some spells that aren't listed in here that I will talk to you guys about here after we're done. 
um, from my race because it, the Villoc Tiefling works a little bit differently. So the the hex uh, is another thing to increase my damage. Basically, um, one creature gets to add another d6 necrotic damage from attacks. And so basically when I start throwing out my Eldritch Blasts, I want to try and hex them and then Eldritch Blast them. That way I can get a little bonus damage out of the deal. Uh, and again, I get Dissonance Whispers and hit Tasha's Hideous Laughter here. Now let's go back to my character sheet here, and we'll talk about some racial spells, because these are kind of cool. Um, it's not your standard tiefling, so it works a little bit differently. So here's what I have, the Battle form Performers of Galgain. Uh, so we know the Villoc, or Villoc tieflings know the cantrip uh, Revealing Lyric, which is kind of a utility spell. Uh, let me pull it up here real quick. All right, so that one is basically, uh, let's see. You speak a brief stanza or lyric from Villoc's song to the target that's in range, uh, and their reaction, however minor, allows a peculiar perception or perception of the target's defenses. On your turn, you gain an advantage on your first attack roll against the target, provided that the spell hasn't ended. So that's kind of cool because if if you know I, I get myself in a bind, I can use this as as an action to get myself advantage. Now. Generally, I'm probably going to lean a little bit more towards, um, a little bit more towards like fairy fire, but that gives me a first level spell that, or a cantrip rather, that I can use at will um, to give myself advantage, which will prove to be pretty handy later on. And then I have uh, at third level, I can cast a Velokian callback, and how that one works is it's a reaction, kind of like hellish rebuke, except for what it does is um, it is a 2d8 psychic damage on failed save or half as much on a successful one. And I love psychic damage in the game. Um, it's a little limited on where you get that from, but it's actually pretty neat to have. And then let's see, at 5th level we can also cast the uh, the Dirt Song of Grim Ear. So the Dirt Song of Grim Ear is uh, kind of an interesting spell. Essentially how this one works is they need to make wisdom saving throw or become charmed by you for the duration. Um, should they become charmed, clumps of wet dirt and dog hair fall out of their ears continuously, uh, and the uh, the charm target starts humming the song with you. Uh, and you must use its actions before moving on on each of its turns to make a melee attack against another creature, other than itself, which you choose mentally. So what it's kind of like is is the um, the spell uh, Crown of Thorns, which is um, which is is similar in nature. Essentially, you you charm them and you have to make them attack before the before the end of their turn. But it's a little bit different flavor. Um, it's definitely cool. Um, that is pretty much it mechanically for for who my character is. So let me stop this real quick here. So that is that is mechanically who Malakar is or Arco. Um, during this game, I'm gonna have some fun with it. He's a musician. I I am used to be musician. I don't practice as much as I used to or or nearly as much as I probably should. Um, but I, I get to use a little bit of my music know-how in, in this character. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is kind of reflavor some spells and use some music terms and stuff like that um, for, for who Arco is. Um, I'm also going to try and work out a, uh, a accent for him. Uh, which I immediately apologize for whatever accent I try to emulate because I'm probably going to screw it up, but always fun for this sort of thing. Um, that is, in a nutshell, who I'm going to be for The Besieged. Make sure you guys check out the uh, the Tabletop Chairs channel and watch that game once it goes up. Um, we're thinking probably starting next month unless we happen to get lucky and everybody is just a just on top of stuff ready to start right away in which case we may change that date so keep tuned or tuned to my channel and i'll let you guys know uh until then i will see you guys at the gaming table and thanks for tuning in